Science Beetle. Hey, welcome students. Uh, in this lesson, what we want to go ahead and do is go ahead and focus on how we determine the empirical formula. I've got two examples that I want to show you. And essentially what we're trying to do is you just come up with a formula based on some percent compositions. Now, if you haven't already done so, I encourage you to go watch the empiric, uh, determining the percent composition lesson that was provided already for you. But in this lesson, we're going to use that information, the percent composition, to go ahead and figure out the empirical formula. So I've got two problems here. Let's go ahead and look at the very first problem. First problem we're looking at is typically going to be in some kind of word uh, problem type. So essentially, you're going to have something that says something like, uh, you have a compound, uh, and it, it's composed of some elements. Some power is composed, let me just write this again, composed of, say, for example, 59% sodium and 41% sulfur. And it will probably just tell you very specifically, go ahead and determine the empirical formula. And so what you need to do is take this information and determine how we calculate uh, the formula from this. So essentially, the very first step you do is go ahead and take the, the information they give you. So they give you two pieces of information. They give you that you've got 59% sodium and 41% sulfur. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that here at the very bottom. 59% sodium, and I note that the symbol for sodium is Na, and I've also got 41% sulfur, and the sul symbol for sulfur is S. And so one of the very first things after I write it down is you want to go ahead and make sure that this is 100%. And so if I add these numbers here together, 9 and 1 is 10, carry the 1, 6 and 4 is 10, so I know that I've got 100% uh, of the total mass is attributed to sodium and sulfur for this particular compound. Since I know that this is the case, then I can take this percentage and just assume that this percent is really grams. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that as 59 grams of sodium and 41 grams of sulfur. With this information, the next thing that I really got to do is now figure out how much moles 59 grams of sodium really is and how many moles 41 grams of sulfur is. So in order to do this, remember from previous lessons that you need to take, if you're trying to figure out the number of moles, you start off with the grams of something and you need to then divide it by the molar mass of the element, or in other words, the atomic mass in order to figure out the number of moles. Okay. In order for us to do that, I'm going to take the 59 grams of sodium, and I'm just going to go ahead and divide that by the atomic mass of sodium, which in our calculations, is, I mean, I'm just going to use a rounded number of 23 grams per one mole of sodium. Okay, So our grams of sodium are going to cancel, so grams cancel in this thing. And I'm going to take this number, and see what I get here. If I go ahead and do that, if I take 59 and I divide that by 23, I'm actually going to end up with 2.57 moles of sodium. And then I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process for the sulfur. And the sulfur here is going to be 41 grams of sulfur. And I'm going to divide that by its atomic mass, which is 32 grams per mole. And if I take those two numbers, if I take 41 and I divide it by 32, that gives me an overall mole number of 1.28 moles of sulfur. Now at this point, I've got two different numbers here. I've got this number here, 2.57 and 1.28. What I need to do is ask myself, which one of these mole numbers is the smaller amount? Obviously, that number is going to be the number associated with sulfur. So I divide both of these amounts by the 1.28. So 1.28 divided by 1.28 is going to give me 1, and I take 2.57 and divide it by 1.28, and that number there, if I divide those two numbers together, will give me a number of 2.18.
Now, these numbers here, I'm going to go ahead and circle these in red. The number here, 1, and the number up here, 2.18, what these represent is it tells you the number of atoms present. Okay? This particular here, the number 1, essentially tells you that you have one atom of sulfur present, and the 2 up here tells you that you've got 2.18 atoms of sodium present in the overall formula. So if I take this, I next need, uh, need to recall the information that I had from identifying cations and anions, and I know that sodium is going to be the cation, so the sodium is going to go first, and I'm just going to go ahead and write this over here in the bottom right, uh, bottom left corner. Since sodium is a cation, I know that I've got sodium, and I've got two atoms according to this, so I'm going to write a little two in the subscript, and I've got one uh, atom of sulfur, so my empirical formula is Na2S, and in fact that is the formula for this compound. And so that's a general process that we do, how we do that.